by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahweh Shai, Wahabah Kakwadash. In Hebrew, that's giving praises to our Almighty Heavenly Father, Yahweh, in the name of His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai, who is our Lord and Savior, and the Holy Spirit, which is the Rakakwadash. The honors to the elders and apostles of GMS, who taught us this truth. Honor to the brethren that's laboring and doing the work to push the gospel, risking their life and freedom to do so. Peace and blessings to the hopeful elect, the one third of our people who are the true Israelites, the Negroes, Hispanics, Native Americans, and Seminole Indians that's returning back to Yahweh and Yahweh Shai during these final moments so that he will have mercy on us in judgment. So we back with another lesson through the power and spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. This lesson is going to be titled Smart Cities Are Smart Prisons. Smart Cities Are Smart Prisons. And when you hear this word smart, like we hear so much these days, when you hear smart city, think about a smartphone, a smart car, a smart house. You know, something where there's so much technology, everything is digital. It can track, trace, monitor, and analyze any and everything you do. So again, when you hear smart cities, think about a smart car, or a smartphone as artificial intelligence it can do everything for you but in doing so everything could be tracked because everything could be digital but that's what this is showing right here which I haven't shown in a minute but we'll get back more to it in a minute these smart cities are also called 15 minute cities now we're going to read what this smart city, this 15 minute city is. So cities should be designed so that within the distance of a 15 minute walk or bike ride, people should be able to access work, housing, food, health, education, culture, leisure. So a smart city or a 15 minute city is a city designed so that you will not have to travel more than 15 minutes away from your house. Not a 15 minute car ride, but a 15 minute walk or a 15 minute bike ride. And that you should not have to, for any reason, go outside that 15 minute boundary. Well, this is already being developed. This is gonna be part of the new world order. You know, these smart cities, which they can track and monitor everything that people do and that's why i said this last lesson is titled smart cities are smart prisons now we got a few clips we're gonna show we're gonna show why these smart cities are actually prisons but we gonna get into the video uh, and you see what they say. In China, each neighborhood zone is separated by a fence. See, it's a metal fence with barbed wire at the top with the entrance gate being guarded. And we're going to see that the entrance to these smart cities are guarded. If you want to get in or out of your zone, you need permission and a face scan. So that's what we see here. This is how America will be built. It's gonna be a 5G supercomputer that's owned by the government that's gonna keep track of everybody's data. You know how much money they spending, the identification, where they going, and then anything, everything and everybody will be microchipped from the phones to your cars. That's why they pushing for electric vehicles. Those vehicles is so that you could be tracked. And then they can shut your vehicle off at any given moment. Even the people will be microchips. We know that's the MOB. And then all this stuff via the microchip will be linked to these 5G towers. That's why they started building them all over the place during the pandemic. But even besides that, houses, we're going to see that they can even microchip trees, garbage cans, wild animals, which they already been doing. But also with this, 
besides the 5G towers and the microchips, you could throw in your street cameras, you know, which we about to see right here. Like when you go to the grocery store and you go to the self-checkout, it got the camera up there that's recording, you know, and them cameras will analyze your biometrics, your facial features. Then we see fingerprint identification. So that's why you was able to unlock your phone with your thumbprint. Everything that we will need uh, to touch in this new world order, hey, everything's going to be analyzed. They're going to know who is where, at what time. They're going to know what you touch, what time you touched it, how long you touched it. So everything is going to be tracked. So let's let this continue. You see the gate. You see the barbed wire. And we're about to see the entrance in a minute. And you see that? You see that? See, you're going to need permission and a face scan to get in or to get out these smart cities. These same cameras that you see at your grocery stores in the self-checkout. And it's analyzing your biometrics. See that? And they guard it. <laughs> but keep watching. <laughs> See, to get in or to get out, you're going to need a face scan and permission. And that's a smart city. You see, it let a man by itself. That's the artificial intelligence of the supercomputer that's going to track and do all this stuff. Look, public restrooms in China require a face scan in exchange for toilet paper. Hey, that's why Moab, who is the Chinese, that's why they could be punished too. Because they in this race with Esau to go digital and microchip everybody. See that? You know, I was talking, but he had to scan his face to get some toilet paper. Let's read this. Chinese vending machine. Pay with your face. Cost of the drink is automatically deducted from your bank account via your digital wallet. So that's going to be on the RFID microchip. There's going to be no more paper money. It's going to be digital dollars. You just look at something and your account going to be deducted. But that's why we say when you think of a smart city, think of a smartphone. You can pay just by looking at stuff, waving your hand. Everything is automatic. It's computerized, digital technology, all done by uh, a supercomputer. There, there will be no need for people. And that's why they call them 15 minute cities. Everything you need, everything that one person would do in life, they should be able to do it within 15 minutes of walking from their house, your vacation, your schooling, your doctor, working out, grocery shopping, pets, insurance, everything you could need in your life, it should be within 15 minutes from you. That's why these are smart prisons. You know, you're no longer behind a prison cell with jail bars. You know, you're going to be a prison to this digital system. You don't need jail bars and handcuffs. You got the microchips. That gives your location via these 5G towers at all times. You got street cameras, biometrics, fingerprint identification, stuff always watching you, zooming in on you, taking pictures. But let's continue. See? And what the scriptures say? You can't buy or sell unless you got the mark. So keep in mind that China is a few months ahead of schedule. The United States is a few months behind. So this coming. And the video, it kind of, um, let me go to it. Let me see if I can jump forward a little bit. 
those of you who still think that 15 minute cities are a great idea and that all of these like digital passports are a good idea let's take a little deeper look on what the canada infrastructure website says and the technologies that they want to use within these 15 minute cities and what they actually mean so this is basically off the Canada website called Infrastructure Canada um, Interactive Map. All of these little dots are proposed 15-minute cities, and all of the colors within these dots represent how much money, prize money, there is for each city if basically completed. So I'm just going to click on one of them just as an example. Okay, let's look at the town of Old Alberta. Basically, back in 2016, they did a census on 9,184 residents and they agreed that they wanted 15-minute cities and their prize category, if they finish it, is $5 million. That means they're not guaranteed said $5 million. All of this stuff is coming from our tax money. And basically, let's see if we click on the challenge statement to see some details of the technologies they want to use. So... This is basically that some of the details that they want to do. And um, I like how they have emergency services and enforcement. Okay, that's kind of cool. Not really, considering how 2020 and 2021 played out. Um, let's see some of the technologies that they want to use, though. Artificial intelligence, red flag. Assistive technology, red flag. See, yup, artificial intelligence. That's his 5G supercomputer. Assistive technology, meaning it's automatic. That's why it's a smart city. It's a prison. As a matter of fact, man, I got to grab that. I got to grab the scripture real quick. I got to go to it. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Now to understand the image of the beast, what did Nebuchadnezzar do? He built a golden image, a golden statue of himself that he commanded the people to bow down to. Well, what's Esau's image that he's causing people to bow down to? It's the microchip. And the microchip is one of a few key components of this digital smart city which is a smart prison but again and he had power to give life to the image of the beast by what by his technologies technology is esau's power everything is done via technology that the image of the beast it, that the new digital system because the image of the beast ain't just the microchip it's the 5g towers the street cameras that do your biometrics and facial readings you know, things that you touch that's analyzing your fingerprints. You know, the supercomputer, the 5G internet, that's all part of the image of the beast. Because again, the microchip is just a key component of the entire image. But um, that the image of the beast should both speak. Yeah, because the stuff is going to speak to you via artificial intelligence. That's why you got Alexa. That's why you got Siri. That's the image of the beast speaking to you. And cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. How do you worship the image of the beast? You see this man right here. He's been microchipped. You know, he took that sauce. So now he's a living antenna. His microchip beings off the 5G towers. So you worship the image of the beast by becoming part of of the image of the beast by sticking your hand out getting the chip sticking your arm out getting the sauce so anybody who don't worship the image of the beast that don't be don't, that don't become part of it they're going to be killed why because all this artificial intelligence and technology is going to label you um as not not identified in the system so the authorities is going to be alerted. Then the martial law troops going to come hunt you down. Well, Esau going to have robotic police dogs, robotic uh, policemen that's going to hunt you down as well. But let's get back to the video. Data analytics. Yeah, okay. Data, data analytics. And that, what's that data? Your identification, 
your medical history, your family records, um, your permanent record, how many times you've been in jail, everything you have done in life, what school you went to, your employment history, what you're making, how much money you're spending, what's your income. That's the data that's going to be kept in this 5G supercomputer. Everybody's going to be connected to the internet. Cloud computing, enterprise solutions, geospatial, really huge red flag, health or medical technologies. Now, this is where it gets scary. Inter health or medical technology. That hot sauce, that microchip. They talk about the microchip can detect sicknesses in the body. And then look. Of things. I will explain that in a bit here. But yeah, Internet of Things. Everybody's going to be connected to the Internet via the microchips and via the information that's on storage about everything. But let's continue. Other scary one is sensors and wearables. IOTs are basically tiny little GPS tracking devices that can be stuck on anything. They can be stuck on your clothes. They can be stuck on your orange juice, your dog, tractor, anything. And they will live data basically give information to the big data cloud and the video analytics, meaning you're going to be watched at all times. So, yep, the Internet of Things, everything will be microchip. Your orange juice, your toilet paper, your tractor, your weed whacker, your cooler, even your tree. They can even stick these sensors underground, your clothes, so everything can be tracked. And all that information going to be stored in the cloud. And that's what we see right here, the core cloud server. But let's continue. Sensors can be placed underground on trees, on lights, everywhere. Now, if you have a ver uh, wearable, that could include the life monitoring necklaces or bracelets. And I don't, if you guys haven't seen them, they're called QR bracelets and they put them on your wrist. They're basically kind of like the, um, you know, the hospital bracelets that you get and you can't take them off. And said bracelets and these sensors and everything combined can watch your every single move 24 hours a day. Now, if they bring in digital IDs and they basically put in your bank account and everything under one and you take that wearable off or you go beyond your, you know, boundary, they can find you and you can't fight it back. They'll just take it out of your bank account. I mean, we've seen the government basically go way overboard. So why wouldn't they do it again? Does this sound like health and safety or cattle? Hey, what she said that 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 bracelet is going to have your digital identification and then probably your wallet, and that you won't be able to take it off, but people may take them off anyway. Well, that's where the microchip come in play. They can be like, you know what? People can take their bracelets off. They losing them. They throwing them. So how about we just microchip people? Esau telling you the bracelet right now only to microchip you once you get into the smart cities. And what does she say? Let's go back a little bit. We got to go back. Let's let's see how she ended this. Off or you go beyond your you know boundary, they can find you and you can't fight it back. They'll just take it out of your bank account. I mean, we've seen the government basically go way overboard. So why wouldn't they do it again? Does this sound like health and safety or cattle? She said we sound like cattle. Don't that sound like they, you know, do it sound like health and safety or are they treating us like cattle? You know, if the lost sheep go too far, slaughter it, bring it back. But we got one more quick video real quick. And we're going to go into the point of these well, we already went into the point of the smart cities, but we gonna see how they gonna implement it. Because you might be thinking, well, I'm not gonna go there. How they gonna make us go there? This video gonna answer it. According to the World Economic Forum website, as of May 2023, 36 countries worldwide will have smart city governance initiatives. Surveillance monitoring analysis reporting technology. You'll have a digital ID that will track in real time your shopping, your entertainment, your activities, and your carbon footprint. You'll also have a 15 minute travel limit without a permit. A permit to travel. And if you exceed any of these things, you'll be denied access to daily activities. Obviously, no one would move into one of these cities voluntarily, but they don't have to because the laws governing agenda 2030 land development allows the government to cease polluted land and move their residents 
to these smart cities. If you're living somewhere where your land and water is poisoned, you don't get an option to opt out. Mm. Where has land and water been poisoned recently? You see that? So because of something that Esau did behind closed doors, it allows the government to seize, to take control of polluted land. In the residents of the land. So the government can take control of polluted land. And once they take that polluted land, they can move the residents of that city that's polluted and put them in these smart cities. And why have we been having all these train derailments lately, spilling up all these toxic chemicals? Well, they plan to move us in these smart cities. They're going to say, you know what? The air is poison. The ground is poison. The food is poison. The livestock is poison. The air is poison. We got to move you into a smart city like they're doing you a favor. But we're going to get into the scriptures now. So we're going to hit Revelation 2 and 10. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil, who is the so-called white man, the Edomites, shall cast some of you into prison. And his son is many, that ye may be tried, meaning attested, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. So yeah, Esau the white man is planning on throwing really everybody in prison. Now, a every week something new come up. So when we break this down, eventually they're going to come with great wrath. You know, Esau and his military going to be trying to throw us in these FEMA death camps. You know, that's the, that's the final stage of it. In the FEMA death camp is a death prison. Well, beforehand, Esau going to be causing all kind of catastrophes, disasters in which the people got to evacuate, you know, such as a climate crisis, you know, such as a hey, your water being contaminated because the train derailed. So we need these people to evacuate because the water unsafe, you know, or the bank's not working. So the people need to evacuate. They can go somewhere else where they can buy food and water. Or it's a blackout in that city that people need to evacuate. Well, all these people that's evacuating, where are they going? Well, they're going to the FEMA death camps, which Esau calls them FEMA relief centers, where they can relieve you of your stress, relieve you of your headaches and your heartaches, relieve you of your problems. So Esau going to eventually snatch us up and force us into the death death camps but beforehand he's creating these disasters so that the people will willingly offer themselves to the FEMA death camps you'd be like you know what we having a bunch of trouble you know we gotta wait for our insurance policies to kick in the house is damaged the water's contaminated um there's no power let's go to the FEMA relief centers so Esau gonna try to lead people willingly to these prisons before he starts snatching us up by force to put us in these prisons. Well, a new one came up about a month ago. And I said, you know what? What did they do in 2020? If you sick, you got a quarantine. Well, what did Esau do? They said, well, because of the train derailments and the chemicals in the, in the sky, it's unsafe to go outside. So the people got a got a got a shelter in order I meaning it's an order that they got to stay indoors inside of their homes so if Esau can't get people to come to their FEMA relief centers it's like okay we can't get them to come here but we can make them prisoners inside of their own homes so if you get a mandate from the government that you got to stay inside your doors and you can't come out and it's an order, well, your home is no longer a home. It's a prison. So one way or another, Esau going to imprison you. Rather he snatch you up, take you into these death camps. Rather he make you come in like a sheep led to the slaughter into these FEMA death camps. Or if you got to stay in shelter at home order, where you got to stay in your home like you in prison. But what's another one? Oh, all the cities are contaminated. 
We're going to take the people in groups and we're going to bring them into the smart cities. The smart city is a smart prison. Y'all saw that you got to get permission and get your face scanned to leave the city. You saw that it was fenced in with barbed wiring. So one way or another, hey, this is just another prison. And that's the, and, and, and what was the law? That if, if stuff is being contaminated, they can take the people and put them here without a choice. So one way or another, we're going to end up in various prisons. It's not just the FEMA death camps. It could be your own home. It could be the FEMA death camps, whether they snatch you up or you go there yourself. Or it could be these smart cities. So one of many ways the people are going to be locked down. So let's go to the next scripture. Revelation 13 to 15. We already broke it down. He had power to give life to the image of the beast, to this digital infrastructure, to all this technology. That's how he caused this stuff to come to life. Because of his technology, these cameras can talk to you and give you instructions. Show your face and you can get some toilet paper. Show your face and you can exit the smart city. Asking you where your identification at. Telling you to wave your hand so you can pay. Telling you the price of a drink. So yeah, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as when I worship the image of the beast should be killed. And then also going to have a cook two and five. Yeah, also because he transgressive by wine. He is a proud man. This is talking about Esau, the so-called white man. Neither keepeth at home, who enlargeth his desire as hell, and is as death. Esau is death in the scriptures, and what cannot be satisfied, but gathereth, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. How is Esau gathering all nations? Well, everybody all over the world already come to America to get an education, to get money. Well, Esau also wanted to gather unto him all people by what? The RFID microchip. That's how he's going to gather to himself all people. Because Esau, he, he ain't got to make people come to America no more. Look, nope, as long as they get the microchip, he know where you at at all times. And what he put to him all people. When you think of a heap, you can think of a pile. So he's going to be piling people up in these FEMA death camps, piling people up in these smart cities. Where they're going to be what? Microchipped. Which is Revelation 13 to 16. And he calls of all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Well, it's going to start off as a bracelet. But we know that they end goal is to microchip you because a bracelet can be cut off, damaged, all kind of things. But that microchip is permanent. And Revelation 13 and 17, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that hath the mark of the beast or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Because we saw in China that they had to scan their face to get some toilet paper. Now, what if you got diarrhea? See, see the problem with it? So you just want to get a Q-tip to clean out your ear. You got to show your face. If women need a tampon, they got to scan their face. Hey, some women have heavier periods. So Esau want to know everything. Why Esau want to know all that? You take out the trash, they measuring how full your garbage is. See that? Yep. And that no man might buy or sell say if he that had the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. So you can't function in this new digital cashless society unless you become part of the system by allowing Esau to put his technology inside of you, ranging from the microchip that's going to go in the hand the Neuralink brain chip that Elon Musk is developing or that hot sauce, which I'm not going to say too much about it, but y'all know what I mean.
And that makes sense when we read Deuteronomy 28, 47. You know, that for everything we need, we got to be part of the system. So, right here, because thou servest not Yahweh, thy God, with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So, because we didn't serve the Lord with a joyful heart, because we didn't praise him for how he abundantly blessed us, therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. So the Lord is going to cause us to serve our enemies for every single thing we could want. Food, water, clothing, education, insurance, a house. Hey, it, it, that's already been happening. Because what? We got to work for the white man's money, make our money to give it right back to him. Well, hey, that's going to morph into the microchip. Well, you want toilet paper? You want to cut your grass? You want to walk your dog? You want to go to school? You got a doctor's appointment? You want some water? You got to scan your face. And your account going to be automatically deducted from your digital wallet that's in your hand. So even for a Q-tip, you're going to be charged for it. And this is the perfection of this scripture. You know, of course, it's now here in America, but it's once America attempts to go digital, we're going to literally have to serve our enemies for every single thing. You want to make a phone call? You got to scan your face. Yup. And he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he hath destroyed thee. Well, hey, we already had the yokes of iron upon us. But now it's going to be a digital yoke. That digital yoke is the RFID microchip. Then, you know, all the fingerprint identifications, biometric face scanning, all that stuff. But that's why another scripture I want to get real quick. Matter of fact, let's go, let's go to this end of this clip real quick. Y'all remember what this lady said? We're going to go back just a little bit. Fight it back. They'll just take it out of your bank account. I mean, we've seen the government basically go way overboard. So why wouldn't they do it again? Does this sound like health and safety or cattle? She said, does it sound like health and safety? What Esau doing? Or do it sound like he treating us like cattle? Well, let's go to the scripture on it. Second Ezra. Chapter 15, verse 10. Behold, my people is led as a flock. My people is led as cattle to the slaughter. So, yeah, this is, you know, Esau acting like he helping us, you know, letting us come to the, to the FEMA relief centers, you know, letting us come to these smart cities. Like, yeah, everything's automated. You have a great time. You get everything you need. Hey, that's our people being led as a flock to the slaughter. That's us being led like cattle to the slaughter. Because in there, they're going to be microchipping folks. And then anybody who refused, they're going to be beheaded or hanged by a tree. So again, what the Lord said, behold, my people, he ain't worried about everybody else. But the Israelites is led as a flock, led as cattle to the slaughter. I will not suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. Yeah, because we've been led as a flock to the slaughter the past 500 years, but it's about to intensify. Now Esau ain't got to hunt us down in the city streets. He ain't got to put out poisonous GMO foods in our community. No, we already microchips. We already in the smart city. He know where we at at any given moment. So he can just exterminate us whenever he feel like it. The Lord not going to let that happen. That's why he says, you know, I'm not going to allow them to suffer in the land of Egypt any longer, which is America. And so that's why the Lord going to bring this place down. And then our last scripture, we're going to hit the Ecclesiasticus, also known as Syrac 12 to 10. Never trust thy enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Yeah, eventually the surface is going to rust. You're going to see the rust. 
And once it starts rusting, it gets worse and worse. Same as the weakness of the so-called white man. You may see, it might seem like he's trying to help you. He's trying to relieve you of your stress, of your issues, give you a new opportunity at life. He's really leading you as cattle to the slaughter. Well, it's going to be a mass extermination of you people. And then once you see Esau's wickedness, it just get worse and worse and worse. He can't hide it. Ain't no going back. When some start rusting, ain't no going back. Same with Esau's wickedness. And matter of fact, we're going to get this last scripture. Ultimately, what is he trying to do? Esther 3 and 13. And the letters were sent by post into all the king's provinces to destroy, to kill, and to cause to perish all Jews, the Israelites, both young and old, little children and women in one day. So yeah, that's going to be the time of Jacob's trouble where they're going to attempt to exterminate us in one day. Which, you know, it'll be a period of time, but, but they're going to get two thirds of our people. And that's what's coming. Verse 14, the copy of the writing for a commandment to be given in every province was published unto all people that they should be ready against that day. Esau is ready against the day where he's going to slaughter two thirds of our people, even though he's going to try to exterminate all of us. And these smart cities is just the beginning of that. Anybody that go not coming out. So smart prisons, smart cities. That's the lesson. So next time, shalom.